journalism now is a very, very great resource for Ukrainians to get information, especially during the war. Hello, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the First Amendment Museum's one-on-one -on -one interview series. I'm Max Nospish, the Manager of Visitor Experiences here at the First Amendment Museum located in Augusta, Maine. Today, I'm joined by a very special guest, Tanya Tchenko. Tanya, if you want to introduce yourself. Uh, yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Tanya. I am from Eastern Ukraine, Kharkiv. And currently I'm in Washington, DC. I'm studying in Georgetown University. My major is international affairs, but I'm also very engaged in the journalism. Awesome, Tanya, thank you for joining us. Sure. So you uh, have been involved in Youth Journalism International and what made you interested in journalism, especially at such a young age? I started doing journalism uh, when I was about 12. Um, I heard about the TV studio opening in my city, and that was something new, and everyone was very excited about it. So I decided to apply, um, and I joined the studio, and eventually I became a host of the youth program in my city on the local TV channel. Um, and my teacher, she was working also on the channel, and she was my like main supporter. She was very helpful. She actually like made me... Um, very interested in the journalism, not all, not only the TV part, but every single part. So she like helped me with writing. Uh, I recorded podcasts. I basically was engaged in all kinds of journalism. Um, and the, the war has started in February. Jackie reached out to me and she gave me the opportunity to join Youth Journalism International and write for the international audience, for the people in the US mostly. And I received a lot of support and I decided that that's a great resource to tell, to tell my story. So what extra pressures and challenges are reporters in Ukraine facing during the ongoing conflict? Um, a lot of reporters uh, join the military sources uh, and they are actually now uh, fighting together with our army uh, because someone has to tell all those news, right? And a lot of reporters actually died during the war because they were reporting right out of the of war zone. Um, and it's very dangerous, uh, but they are very, very passionate about their job and they really want to uh, get the news and they really want to like get this source of information to people. They really want people to know what's actually going on. And all of the photos, all of the video materials and stories, they were actually there. They were like watching people doing this and then they reported to the audience, to the whole world. So, I mean, journalism now is a very, very great resource for Ukrainians to get information, especially during the war. It was always a great resource, obviously. Uh, but also it's a very dangerous work because, uh, I mean, when you are on the field and you are not fighting, you're just reporting those materials and you don't have experience in the military forces, obviously. That's very dangerous. And, but that's like a very great job that they do. Everyone like in Ukraine supports journalism, especially now. Yeah, so why why is the work report uh, why is the work reporters do in Ukraine important both at home there and abroad, especially now? Uh, because not a lot of media, not a lot of journalists abroad know what's actually going on in Ukraine. And it's actually like a battle because um, in Russian media there's a lot of propaganda. Uh, and Ukrainian media, I mean, I, I obviously, I am Ukrainian, you know, I can tell you about my country, but I know that those photos, those videos, they are not edited because I see that happening in my city, in the cities nearby. Um, and those information for international media, it's very important. It's very important to get the world to know what's going on in Ukraine because they can see actually those materials because Russia, uh, they put a lot of propaganda in their media. There are like a lot of fake news. They basically like, those news that they post, it's just like crazy. When we read this, that as Ukrainians, even like in our local Ukrainian medias, they post Russian news and they're like, look what they post because that's just ridiculous because we kind of know the truth, you know? And for international media, they kind of need to analyze both of the sides and they need to like actually know what's going on. 
So I think the journalists do the, just a great job because they not only get our nation to know what's going on, but they also report to the whole world. And based on that, the world can make decisions and they can support Ukraine more. Is freedom of the press worth fighting for and protecting and why? Yeah, absolutely. Like freedom of speech in Ukrainian media right now, it's just amazing. I'm very proud of the media in Ukraine and all the journalists because right now they actually have like rights to post anything that what they want because before the full invasion of uh, Ukraine, there were like some rules, obviously, in every like media, they had their own rules, their own kind of like vocabulary. So they were very care- careful what it was, what they post. Right now, they're like less careful in words because obviously everyone is angry with Russia and they don't really like care how they address Russia in the media. And now like freedom of speech in Ukraine is like amazing because we just like actually report what's going on and you don't really care like what Russia will think about it, what will happen if you like say that or that, because we have like more important problems to focus on, like actions, actual like battles. But at the same time, it gives like an opportunity for journalists to actually talk about everything that's going on. So freedom of speech definitely worth fighting for because this is the right thing to do. You know, this is the truth that people gain from these sources. And that's just amazing. So uh, how can the rest of the world help members of the press and reporters in Ukraine? Well, right now, uh, the only thing that I kind of wanted to ask is uh, to believe us and like to check our information. Obviously, you need to do fact checking all the time. But just compared to what some media like of pro-Russian countries, like some countries support Russia, that's obvious, and Russian media especially, um, they post some ridiculous news. It's like, for example, if something happened in one of the cities, like some missiles, like destroyed some objects, Russia can post that they did that because there was like a military base there. But the truth is that this was just a school where kids used to go. And it's like just a normal place for people. It's a lot of civic people who died because Russia like posted in their media that they like hit the military object, which wasn't true. So for international media and just for people who want to support Ukraine, I just want them to know that you always can check those objects. Like you can always check that information in the media. But it's really important to understand what's going on, actually, not just like, oh, well, there are always two sides, because people often say that, like, that there are always two sides, but not always, you know, because like when people are actually dying and people are actually suffering, that's that's different. Right. So thank you so much for joining us, Tanya. Do you have anything that you want to get out there, say, promote, anything like that? Um, The only kind of thing that I really, really wanted to say, because it's very personal to me, um, is the Azovstal, which is um, a plant, which was a factory in Mariupol, and all of the defenders who were defending the city of Mariupol, which is like fully occupied right now and fully destroyed, they are um, the prisoners of war currently, and they're in Russia. And I feel personally that this situation is not highlighted enough in media. Ukrainian media also like uh, they do a lot for that, but not enough for me, um, because my brother is also there. And I really want to like work to support this situation and to kind of get engaged more and support our military, especially from Azovstal. Do you mean your brother is in in, uh, prisoner of war in Russia? He is, yeah. Wow, yeah. Sorry to hear that. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Tanya. Sure, thank you so much for inviting me. It's a great chance to tell more about my country. Mm -hmm.